is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Wednesday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got about 24 minutes to go until the start of trading. You have markets a little bit mixed this morning. Quite the clawback yesterday. You trade to a low of 44.82. We charge higher basically since about 11 a.m. Eastern time from yesterday morning. You get where do you get to? Right back to the 618 of that pullback we had on Friday. About 45.35 on that index. But since then, let's let back that up, excuse me. Yeah, Friday trade lower, charge higher, and we've, what's going on with my charts right now? Yeah, and we're up by about six points. We were as high as about 45.35 last night in the S&Ps. Somehow my chart's catching up there. No charts? Oh, shame on me. Okay, well there, that's, my, my computer was, I think I had a glitch there. Maybe they caught this time. I think they did. Okay, we'll do it again. S&Ps, there we go. Good morning, folks. Up six points right now. You have the NASDAQ 100 up by 17. The Dow up by 21. And the Russell is flat this morning. We have some weak economic data. We'll jump to the headline. Why not? We have a few different headlines out there. Chinese deflation, another worrying signal for the commodities demand. That's from Bloomberg over there. You jump over to the journal. China slips into deflation in a warning sign for the world economy. Uh, the lifting COVID-19 pandemic curbs has been followed by an unusual bout of falling consumer prices instead of a surge. And yeah, you don't have to go far. Take a look at the, uh, it's going to say front page. I guess they got it off there. It was on the front page of the journal. Talking about basically China and deflation. Yeah, here's the chart I was talking about. Consumer price index, we're actually going lower. Producer price index, lower as well. China consumer and producer prices dropped together. First combined drop since 2020. Uh, core CPI remaining positive, but they actually have deflation going on in China there. So that potentially weighing on things a bit. We got some fundamental news out there, but right now we have a little bit of a mixed market. We jump to commodities. Gold contract right now flat, trading at 1959. We jump over to silver, up by about a penny right now. Crude trading up a dollar. Check out that acceleration from yesterday, right? You pop to 83 bucks. You drive higher to 84 this morning. You put crude on the daily. You're now above where we were trading at in April of this year. That was a high of about 83 bucks. Let's see, 83.58. So we're at 83.89. We're at prices that we have not seen. Yeah, that's above there as well. You're going back to November, man. Pretty remarkable. We're pushing $85 crude. We're coming into August. Uh, schools starting this week in Tampa. Florida, I should say, starting this week. We get out, though, like end of May. Yeah, end of May, I think schools get out. So, you know, I've been digging into this more because I was a little bit mystified, and it does probably have to do with the weather, that, you know, things are so hot in August, and even, yeah, in August especially, that the kids have an off in August. They'd rather have it off in June. So I guess that makes sense to a certain degree. Uh, but nonetheless, they're basically back Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. I think in Tampa, they go back Thursday. Uh, summer, somewhat over here, but we still got a big summer in terms of traveling. Crude prices pushing $84 this morning. We jump over to notes and bonds. We got a little bit of flat action right now. Back to a 10 minute chart. Friday, we saw the real move there. Monday, we chop around and we're basically sitting right near the highs of that acceleration from Friday. You got the 10 year flat at 111.13. And pulling up the yield, that's talking about a yield right now of 4.02%. That is the yield on the 10-year, 4.02%. All right, we got some economic news out there, and why not let's kick it off with Disney, man. This move was right after the close yesterday. And when is this one out? Yeah, 5 o'clock last night is this article. So ES Bannon is launching their sports book in partnership with Penn Entertainment. Penn, they already have gambling in 16 states. They run it through the Barstool sports book. They bought Barstool for about $500 million combined in 2020. 
and then they purchased the rest of it, 500 million combined between the two, I think a year later or a year or two later. So there's a lot of moving parts to this. The bottom line is you got a 10 year deal. They're paying about $1.5 billion, I believe. I'm not sure even, yes, yeah, here it is. So Penn's gonna pay ESPN 1.5 billion in cash over the 10 year period. They grant ESPN about 500 million of warrants to buy approximately almost 32 million Penn common shares that will vest over the same period. ESPN has the option to designate one non-voting board observer to the board, so they're putting somebody on there, or after three years, designate a board member subject to certain regulatory approvals, whatever that means. Now, they are divesting in Barstool, okay? And we'll talk a little bit more about this later in the program, because I was reading a pretty cool tweet talking about how this plays into it. So Barstool is going to have a non-compete here for the gambling aspect of things. But they basically gave it back to Portnoy because all of the gambling is sucked out of it. They have a non-compete in it as well. And Penn has a 50% option if Barstool ever gets sold again. Disney didn't want to be in business with Barstool. They were okay with being in business with Penn. Penn really wants to be in the gambling business, man. And this is going to get them in it, right? It's going to be ESPN bet. Can you imagine um, the network, the network's faces? all driving people on the ESPN programming of, of sports to that ESPN bet app, which the Barstool Sportsbook app is going to be rebranded as that app. Uh, yeah, that's, that's, that's a big opportunity, to put it lightly. And Penn shares reacting last night right out of the gate. There's your acceleration. From about 25 bucks, we're sitting at 30. So what's that, a 20% acceleration right now. They have their earnings call going on this morning as well. That news comes out. Disney was marginally higher last night. They've caught in a little bit of an acceleration as well this morning. Maybe something going on on the earnings call on Penn that's boosting that stock even more. Seems like a good deal for all around, even for Barstool, man. You know, Portnoy's going to catch some heat actually on the details in terms of them getting pushed out right Penn not wanting to be with barstool essentially uh they paid 500 million bucks for it he's got it back at worst a 50 percent option if it ever gets sold goes to Penn. uh it'd be interesting to see how that company does outside of sports gambling because i do follow them to a certain degree enjoy some of the stuff that they put out uh don't agree with everything that gets said, that's for sure. And I'm trying to find this tweet, folks, as I do it. And I will find it later in the day because it broke down some of the clarification. Let's see if I got it here. All right, I'll pull it up after the break. Okay, no, here it is. All right, perfect. Not familiar with who this is on Twitter, folks, and this is fast-breaking news. It just happened last night. You get the conference call going on with Penn right now. Maybe, maybe they have more information coming out, okay? But check it out. ESPN gets 117 million unique visitors a month. Barstool gets eight, right? They're in a different world right now, okay? In Illinois, so for Penn, Barstool did not help them capture the market as they hoped, talking about gambling, okay? In Illinois, Penn has the seventh largest handle of sportsbook with 3.7% of the market. FanDuel has 43% and DraftKings has 31%. Okay, so they tried to get into sports gambling with Barstool and it isn't quite happening. We'll finish talking about some of this, folks. We got Roblox earnings. They're trading lower today. We got a lot to talk about. Stay tuned. I'll be right back. If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at 
tfnn.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no cash or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. And we got our man, Kevin Hinks. He's on vacation for a couple weeks, uh, as I said, coming into August. So we'll get him back, I believe, next week. But uh, seeing him, he's, he's doing some good traveling for himself, enjoying this August summer. Uh, we miss him, but he'll be back next week. And yeah, as I mentioned, we got some companies out with their numbers. Penn is one of them. We'll jump to Robolux real quick before we jump back to some of the Penn saga going on. Uh, Robolux, some, some weak numbers, man. They miss on numbers. They miss on people. Uh, yeah, that stock tanking. Interesting because... We got a six-year-old in our house, and he enjoys playing Roblox. We got to watch that one. That one can be a little bit old. Uh, he plays Minecraft, which is a little bit less adult-themed at times, but it is interesting. And I'll tell you, he's not spending any money on there. That's for sure, man. But nonetheless, uh, Roblox shares, they're down today. But jumping back to this pen story. So there's a lot of moving parts to this, and it's interesting when you break down. I think it's a great deal, like I said, almost for all around, man. You got pent up about 20% right now. Disney catches a pretty marginal bid up by, what, a dollar? Still more than a percent with a mixed market going on right now. And so jumping back to the story real quick, here's some of the details to, to go over, okay? Of course, the Barstool deals the talk of Twitter, man. Portnoy buys back Barstool, okay? But here's what happens. And comparing the two, and it is remarkable when you look at it, and it's also remarkable for all the attention that Barstool gets that they weren't able to turn that into a little bit more of a market share for sports gambling in the states that they exist in. Surprising that in Illinois, they're talking about 3.7% of the market, and you got Fan FanDuel and DraftKings combined at 74% of the market, right? So they went out on a limb to go after Barstool. It was a perfect time for it to happen, right? Everybody's staying at home, gambling investments, stock market, online trading, et cetera, taking off. Now, they talk about in here is that Disney had a Barstool partner, partnership for, I think it was one show, and it, it lasted literally one show, and they ended up saying this was not a good idea. So part of the deal is that Barstool has a non-compete with Penn. Before the Penn acquisition, the largest advertising client of Barstool was Sportsbooks, of course. Now, no money is going to be coming in from the best profile of clients, okay? So it is going to be a stretch there. 
they cannot launch their own sports book. A small deal. Yeah, and they get 50%. So they have a non-compete. They can't launch a sports book, and Penn gets 50%. But Portnoy still sold it for $500 million within the last few years, years, which is pretty remarkable in that aspect, right? And Penn gets to go to some of the details here. You're talking about a 10-year deal, man. Okay, online gaming over a 10-year deal, and there's another 10-year option on here, okay? The casino company can extend the term for another 10 years by mutual agreement. Listen, I'm looking at this chart at 30 bucks, man, thinking I should buy it right now. That's, that's what I'm thinking, okay? Doesn't mean you can't get ahead of yourself, and boy, this is a longer game, okay? But when I look that they signed a 10-year deal, don't expect to make all your money in the next 30 or 60 days, all right? But over a 10-year horizon, controlling the betting landscape for a company like ESPN when you only control about 3 to 4% of the market in some markets and you're taking on FanDuel and DraftKings. Think about FanDuel and DraftKings, man. Let's talk about their charts, okay? Obviously, do you ever watch some of the sport, the shows, folks? DraftKings down about $2, nothing too surprising. What is FanDuel? What's their symbol? Anybody know? Maybe in the den, you can help me out with FanDuel. Uh, are they private? Yes, yeah, somebody bought them, right? They talked about it in the article, actually, as I talk about that as well. Let's see. Yeah. Ireland-based competitor Flutter, which has expanded aggressively into the U.S. via its FanDuel business, fell as much as 6.1% in London. Uh, yeah, so that's a company owned by Flutter Entertainment, I guess. So Penn's going to make payments totaling 1.5 billion over 10 years and grant ESPN 500 million of warrants. Yeah, the casino come this is the part I wanted to get to. Penn said the deal could generate between 500 million and a billion dollars in annual earnings before interest taxes, depreciation and amortization, which isn't quite real earnings, right? Because those things do matter. But nonetheless, I think that's a big one, folks. And when you take a look at the pen chart, okay, that's DraftKings. You jump over to the Analyze tab, you jump on the Fundamentals, you go down here, you're talking about a $4.5 billion company right now, okay? So it's quite a contract, right? $4.5 billion company and you're making $1.5 billion of payments over 10 years. That's $150 million a year. Over 10 years, you got 500 million in warrants. But take a look at this thing longer term, man. You're back to where we were in 2017, and it's 2023 now. They burned 500 million bucks by a bar stool, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, not a bad price at 30 bucks, man. Not a bad price. We'll see where volume goes, right? We got a lot of volume back here at the COVID lows, of course. You haven't quite got to that level. But I see this as a strong deal, man. A strong deal for sure. And Disney makes their entry. I mean, Disney's got a lot of problems going on right now with their charts. So I imagine they're happy to get a 10-year deal. They're happy to get a partner in there. They get warrants that they can collect on as well. And they get that off their plate now. It'll be interesting to see how much this actually gets integrated into everything that ESPN does, okay? ESPN already has ties to sports gambling, though it has steered clear of taking actual bets. It has betting-related shows and marketing deals where links to sports books are integrated into ESPN's website. Uh, Disney also acquired a stake in DraftKings as part of its acquisition of Fox Entertainment in 2019. Yeah, and they've been exploring it. They bought in. They brought in their last uh, Kevin Mayer, right, and uh, one other gentleman. Can't remember his name as analysts uh, to help potentially with ESPN. So it looks like that deal's done, and it's going to be everywhere, man. If you're not familiar, folks, okay, ESPN is already gambling. They already have shows completely geared towards gambling, and I'm talking. I can't remember what the shows are. I don't watch them. OK, but they are geared towards literally just a half hour of gambling analysis of lines, betting, over, under, et cetera. And, yeah, it's it's something that they're going to be able to use those brands. I think it's going to be a big one. And there's nothing like gambling. Gambling's never going away, man. And like we don't have gambling yet in Florida. OK. Yeah. We don't have 
gambling in Florida yet, which makes no sense in terms of what we should have. We don't have online poker. That's another story, right? Gambling. How do all these states have online sports betting and they don't have online poker? Remember that, folks, when you think about how crazy things are. Because poker is actually a game that's beatable. Sports gambling, the VIG is too high to beat it. Doesn't mean you can't win more than you lose, okay? And this is an important one as we end this segment on, okay? Sports gambling, yes, the rare few can beat it, but the VIG is usually too expensive to beat that game versus poker, the VIG is small enough that many players that are skilled enough over their competitors can beat the game. That is why the house loves sports gambling, though, versus poker, okay? Um, but it's absolutely absurd that the game that you can't beat is legal and the game you might be able to beat, like poker, is illegal. And I've, uh, we'll, we'll end it right there. But nonetheless, interesting deal. Uh, yeah, and keep Penn on your radar. And trading at 30 bucks, well off of those highs. We're coming back for the open, folks. Disney, marginally higher. We get the S&Ps up by three. We'll be right back. Tigers. Candlestick pattern analysis is a primary tool among successful traders, and you should be no different. Candlestick patterns can demystify buy points, sell points, general price movement, and so much more. At 4 p.m. on Monday, August 14th, trader Teddy Kekstadt will be hosting a live, hour-long webinar on Japanese candlestick patterns. Teddy, the author of the Tiger Forex Report, has been trading for 33 years, and candlestick patterns have been instrumental to his success. For just $97, see how to use candlestick patterns to analyze stocks and options in order to capitalize on market swings, increase your odds of success, and decrease your risk. During this live webinar, you will learn when to use and when not to use Japanese candlestick patterns in this volatile market. Dispel the myths about this strategy and see just how much the mastery of candlestick pattern recognition can impact your trading. Visit TFNN.com today. TFNN. Educating investors. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFM. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern for free. Each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We got markets open, and we trade a little bit lower on the opening bell there. We get the S&Ps rolling over to negative territory, 45.17. All the markets turned red there. We were pretty much flat, but a little bit of a sell in the open with the NASDAQ 100 off by 
single digits, Dow, everything in the single digits, we'll say. Crude, holding pretty steady, near $84, $83.86 for that crude contract. You got gold basically flat at $19.59. We jump over to the dollar index this morning. Dollar was higher. We pull back a bit to 102.37, so a little bit of dollar weakness just in the last hour or so since that high at about 8.15 a.m. Eastern time this morning. Did you get your Powerball ticket for last night's drawing? I know we got some listeners in Florida. I bought my ticket at a Publix in Florida. I chose the wrong Publix. You had to choose the one on Neptune Beach. If you bought your ticket at a Publix in Neptune Beach, Florida, check those numbers because you might have won $1.58 billion last night. Cash option, something like $750 million. But yeah, I woke up. A uh, little bit of, of that hope. And why not? You got to have hope, man. You got to be in it to win it, folks. That's, you know, you got to be in it to win it. Um, yeah. All right. Dollar index down a bit. Pretty remarkable, though, right? You wake up. If somebody told me last night that, hey, the winning ticket's going to be sold at a Publix in Florida, boy, that, that as an odds and statistics person, man, that, that increases the odds dramatically. Didn't quite come through, but pretty close. Uh, nonetheless. All right. Let's get back to what we got going on. Let's see how these stocks are opening. They've got their numbers going on right now. We jump to Penn. They pull back on the open. Well, we're not buying it yet at 30. Look at that. <whistles> Looks like the optimism a little bit spicy. And again, as I said, longer term. That's a 10-year deal, okay? Where online gaming is going to be in 10 years from right now, <whistles> there's going to be some winners and losers, man. And they are controlling ESPN for a decade. And I think you can't overstate the value in that, folks, when you think about you're controlling the... Anyway, we talked about it. You're controlling basically the entire media apparatus of live sports in the U.S., and you're going to have a sports book that goes with it. We jump over to Disney shares. Yeah, everything sells off a little bit here as we get the NASDAQ now off about 10, Dow off 21, Russell really taking it off about 14. We're going to talk about banks in a second. Watch out for the Russell, man. Look at this. Yeah. We said Roblox, their numbers out, weak numbers out this morning. Yeah, that's a big miss, man. I was talking about it. Let me see if I can find their numbers. I was reading an article about it earlier. I was especially interested, as I mentioned, because, let me see what they say. Where am I? I lost the article I had. Hold on. Forgive me, folks. Um, especially interested, kids, kids, here we go. Let's see what we got here. Roblox shares drop after company misses estimates on top and bottom line. 65.5 million average daily active users, up 25% from a year earlier. A net loss of 282 million for the quarter. That's up from a loss of 176 million for the same period a year ago. Pretty remarkable how these companies do business. Revenue, 781 versus 785. Yeah, where are the people, though? Because they missed on the people, man. Yeah, there are more numbers in here. They missed. I saw more numbers in the last article I was reading here. And I'll try and find that one as well. Because the comparatives were a tough miss there for that company. And they're tanking. And yeah, look at it. Look at it they keep going. Even as this market actually just bounced. But take a look at this thing longer term. Well off of the highs of 141. You've been shopping around about 40 bucks for what? A year and a half basically on this? Let's back this up. Yeah, was it this company that, I think it was this company that overtook Activision, right? Yeah, still an $18.7 billion company right now at $31. She traded up to $141. I remember at that time the run that it got on those earnings that it had in November of 2021 actually overtaking Activision Blizzard. And you take a look at Activision Blizzard now, of course, with the Microsoft soft acquisition. They're trading at $72.1 billion right now. Microsoft's buying them for $69 billion, I think, is what it was. But meanwhile, you got Roblox with a market cap still sitting at $18 billion. So think about that, right? Microsoft bought Activision Blizzard for almost $70 billion. You now have Roblox with a market cap of 18.5, and at one point, it was well above there. Everything getting a little lofty. And yeah, you talk about a haircut, man. How many shares are outstanding in this thing? $610 million shares outstanding. So every... 
10 bucks would be 6 billion. Yeah, so what are you pushing? Four to five billion dollar market cap, shave off this equity, man. Woo, that is a haircut. Be careful, folks. Let's see how Penn is trading off that. Yeah, they're sitting at about $28. Listen, longer term, man, you know, as a technical trader, getting this equity between 20 and 30 bucks on a longer term basis for a 10 year deal for ESPN, I think that's a great deal. All right, and I'm biased a bit in online gaming. But there's nothing like sports gambling when it comes to ESPN, man. And there's going to be, here's the kicker that goes into this, okay? Because I have a history of online gaming. If you're unfamiliar, played a tremendous amount of online poker in my day. And so I'm still in that industry to a certain degree, right? I'm reading news, I'm following. Uh, every so often I'll go play a tournament. I haven't played in a while, man. When you got a two-year-old, you got a, you know, COVID, and then having a child right coming out of COVID. The casino is not a place that I've been. I think I've been there once or twice. Went there for Mother's Day this past uh, Mother's Day. Went to the Hard Rock in Tampa. It was a good time. But in live betting, okay, if you don't really understand, everybody thinks gaming, okay? Gaming's a big deal. Are you going to bet on the Pats to win Sunday or are you going to bet on them to lose? I'm, I'm going to take the Pats and I'm going to parlay it with the over, right? That's what everybody understands about gaming. But here's the kicker, man. In live betting is really where things take off, especially for these companies where people are making multiple bets. So controlling a company like ESPN that controls the content for companies that do in live betting for sports books, it's a no-brainer for the potential. And I don't know how you compete when you're FanDuel and DraftKings. And in live betting, folks, means that you're betting as the game is happening, okay? So on third and 10 at the Chiefs 45 yard line, right? Are the Pats gonna get their first down? Well, you can bet on that. And then you can bet on the next first down, whether they're gonna throw a touchdown. You can bet on every single play. So imagine if you can bet on every single play, you're watching every single play. And yes, football is on a variety of channels, okay? But no matter what, sports programming is everywhere. ESPN controls so much of it. And yeah, they might not have the Fox schedule. They might not have the NBC um, Sunday lineup of some of those big football games, which is a big one, but they got sports every single night of the week, man, and people like to bet all the time. So 28 bucks for Penn, I think that's a good deal, man, long-term, I do. Disney shares up a bit on that news, and I'm sure you have, yeah, we'll go to DraftKings, down about 6.7%, not taking it too hard, so surprising, because that's, uh, you know, maybe the market, some of that going on with DraftKings, you think, oh man, they might be in trouble, right? Well, part of what they like there is that they don't have to spend all that money, right? That's part of what probably is not sending the stock even lower. It's a lot of money. It's $1.5 billion over 10 years. Penn National is only worth $4.5 billion as a company, right? So it's a lot of cash, to say the least. But gambling, we'll see how it plays out from there. Market slightly in the red. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be coming back. We'll talk a little bit of uh, Forex. Stay tuned. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe 
to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the funds is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We have the S&Ps down about three points, a little bit of a sell-off there on the open. We're trading at 45.15, somewhat near the close of yesterday's action. You see, though, we were 20 points higher in this market at about 45.35. So already, the S&P has given up about 20 points from the pre-market highs. You get the NASDAQ 100, giving it up a bit as well, 15,321. We're about 100 points off of the highs of yesterday. Dow off 17, the Russell claws back some of that loss we got on the open, 1948 right now, still down about a third of a percent. We jump around to some of the FANG stocks. Let's see how the big dogs are doing. Apple sells off on the open. We're trading right now down about 40 cents, 179.36. We jump over to Amazon, down about three quarters percent. Microsoft shares this morning, slightly in the red. We jump over to Meta, slightly in the red as well. NVIDIA shares off 2.4 percent. wonder what's going on there with NVIDIA. Got any news out there? Yeah, off 2.5% for NVIDIA shares. And we usually have our man Teddy Kegstad on Wednesdays at 40 past. He had something come up today. He texted me this morning. We may get him on later in the week. He apologizes. Uh, but we're talking about our man Teddy Kegstad anyway, folks, because this coming Monday, we have a candlestick webinar coming up with our man Teddy. So I think we'll get him back on so he can talk about the markets and talk a little bit about the webinar as well. We'll get him on this week before Monday. But check it out on the front page, folks. Japanese candlestick pattern stock and option strategies with our man Teddy. This is going to be this coming Monday. OK, it's Wednesday right now. Please don't wait until the last minute to sign up. It's going to take place in the TFNN Discord server. So if you're already in the den, it's as simply as we tag you. You're in the room. You can see everybody. You can hear Teddy. You can watch his charts throughout the hour from 14, 4 p.m. till 5 p.m. Eastern Time on this coming Monday, August 14th. Now, Teddy does an outstanding job right in the Tiger Forex report, folks. He's a Forex export expert, and he's taught us all so much, man. He's taught me so much. But it's so cool what's going on with the Forex market tied to bonds, of course, and then how that's played into the interest rate policies for the currencies and then for our markets. But this webinar is focused on candlesticks, equities, and options, folks. And, you know, I pulled it up. Teddy's written a candlestick book. If you've never checked it out, folks, you can get this book as well. Now, this is a completely separate deal just on Amazon. You can just search for his name, Ke Kegstat. That's how I found it real quick. High Probable Japanese Candlestick Patterns for 21st Century Online Traders, written by our man Teddy Kegstad. It's got some reviews out there. It's got a 4.6. Uh, you can get it for free if you sign up for like a Kindle, I believe, something like that, or it's 10 bucks online. So he's always been into candlesticks, okay? So this webinar was just not created out of thin air. He is a candlestick expert. He's written a book on it out there. And it's, it's a pattern, folks, that we should all understand. And maybe you do, but if you're anywhere near the beginning of your journey, I encourage you to check it out. And even if you just want to fine-tune some of those skills, man, $97, it'll be an hour 
this coming Monday, August 14th. Check it out. It'll be archived as well. Uh, nothing recurring about that, okay? So this isn't the newsletter. That's its own deal. We kind of separated this out. Teddy wants to do a webinar talking about maybe some equities, some options, and the patterns he uses. So he put it together, and that'll be Monday, and I think we'll talk to him later in the week. But sign up, folks. Reserve your spot. That way you don't miss out, and we'll get you in the room this coming Monday. Five days from right now, so don't wait. Pretty August 14th is in five days, man. We are in some crazy heat in Florida, folks. Um, boy, I tell you what. I mean, I managed to make a little beach day yesterday in the afternoon, listening to my dad's show. was sitting at the beach, going to the beach, and I went to the beach in Tampa. And I tell you, folks, it was hot, okay? And we're making it through the summer months, and we got it made in Florida in the winter. But, boy, it was something like I hadn't even experienced. I'm pretty sure it was too hot for the beach. We went to a beach in Tampa that's nice, but it's, uh, it's by the bay. It's pretty shallow there, and it goes out pretty far. So, boy, that water was especially warm. I'm telling you, man, it felt like it was like 95 degrees. I'm getting heat advisories everywhere. The feels like is 105, folks, 105, the feels like today. Right now, we got at about 90. There's your heat advisory. Let's get the ad down, please. <laughs> uh, heat index values up to 112. I say this, stay safe out there, folks, no matter where you are. I mean, our man Larry Pezzavento, right, that heat in Arizona, that's no joke. We all know it. It's no joke around here either, man. I was out there with the kids yesterday. We were in the water. I wasn't sure, and I'm being real. I was not sure if the kids, and I knew I'd be okay, all right? But I wasn't sure. We got Tommy. We got Landon. Landon's six. Tommy's two. I wasn't sure if the kids were actually getting hotter by being in the water or getting warmer by being uh, cooler by being in the water because it was so warm and it was so hot outside. So we stuck around for a couple hours. We made it. Got in the cool air-conditioned car and took off. But be careful out there, folks, uh, because this weather is a different deal as we are – coming into the middle of August. The other side of that is we got, what, another six weeks, and then we're into October, man. And in Florida, that's when we start to get out of some of this reprieve. All right, what else we got going on? Let's pull up some of the articles I was talking about here. Let's see what we got. Yeah, we talked about Roblox. We talked about China. No, we're going to talk a little banks. Here we go. The journal out here. Banks' problems aren't over, according to the bond market. Yeah, we saw the downgrade yesterday that had all the banks trading lower, right? Maybe that's what's weighing on the Russell again. What is weighing on the Russell? Let's jump around. Yeah, PNC off another 1.3%, right? Let's see how the big banks are trading. Wells Fargo off almost a percent, man. These banks, even the, the best of the best, JP Morgan off by three tenths percent. Citi basically flat. Bank of America off four tenths percent. Wells Fargo off by eight tenths percent. And part of the reason they get the downgrade or they get the negative outlook, right, is that they are gonna be having to pay for deposits for some time, folks, okay? So you had Moody's out there yesterday downgrading the credit rating of 10. Many of the reasons for the actions will be familiar, rising deposit costs and risk to commercial property and construction loans posed by the shift to remote work. I mean, the headlines are out there recently that WeWork just put out a issuance that they they probably are going BK for all intents and purposes. WeWork, yeah. They were trying to do a turnaround, but yeah, commercial space, man, it is a problem right now. This is banker bonds. Percentage point gap between yields of senior bonds of A-rated regional banks and treasuries. Yeah, you're talking about the lowest level all the way back to that area of about one and a quarter percent we're talking about. The Fed's tougher capital requirements for banks with over 100 billion in assets should be a positive for their credit risk as more equity capital better protects bondholders. Some key issues unaddressed by the Fed's thousand plus page proposal. Yes, some, I would say so. Um, so pay attention to those banks, man. We're seeing it happen today. We saw it happen yesterday, right? And we are so far off of these March lows, man, that I'm not sure it completely makes sense to that degree when you look at some of these equities. PNC, not so much, but still off the low of about 110. But even looking at Citi, yeah, look at Wells Fargo, get it back. Even the big banks are okay, but Bank of America, 31 bucks at 26.
And look at the Dow, catching a little bit of a bid, up by 16. We keep our eye on Penn, tra trailing off a bit, still up by about 11.5%. Disney shares up by a percent. Stay tuned, folks, one more segment. S&P's negative by six, we'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den. Hosted at Discord, TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den. Available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TF. .com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the Opening Call newsletter at TFNN.com. The Opening Call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Welcome back, folks. We have markets sliding a bit right now. You got Tesla off about one and a quarter percent. Hadn't covered Tesla yet. Uh, and Tesla, how about the front page of the journal online, man? Exclusive Tesla footage suggests reasons for autopilot crashes. Didn't get to this one yet. I'm not even sure whether it's good or bad. Um, system failed to recognize stopped emergency vehicles. Well, that's not good. I figured. Stock's down one and a quarter percent. Failing to recognize stopped emergency vehicles. Seems like a big one for self-driving vehicles. And I mentioned WeWork as we finish up the program. Yeah, raises doubt about its survival. They issued a going concern warning because its co-working clients are canceling their memberships at a faster clip than expected. The world's, world is changing fast, man. This company, once valued, almost, we'll call it 50 billion, 47 billion. What's 3 billion once you're at 47? Almost $50 billion. And guess what? They just issued a memo saying they might not... Uh, even be around. And how about Newman, right? Getting out, Adam Newman, that's his name, I believe, getting out with billions of dollars. Not bad. Hey, man, don't hate the player, hate the game. Cannot hate on the way he got that done, man. Um, 
Matsuyashi son, right? Softbank, boy, he uh, he got roped into that one, and yeah, from there they go. But pretty interesting in terms of the rise and falls. Never think a company is too good to fail, man, because boy, we've seen some heroic collapses uh, lately. Markets rolling over a bit right now. You get the Nasdaq falling. We're off 75 points. Let's take a look at some of those other equities. Yeah, check out Nvidia, man. Off 2.7 percent right now. You jump over to Roblox shares. Off about 19% right now. Microsoft shares off four tenths percent. Amazon almost a full percent right now. Google shares barely in the red. You get some negative action. We jump over to the VIX right now. Volatility index, not that bad for a market that's trailed a bit. Still sitting under 16 at 1582. We keep our eye on the dollar index. Yeah, chopping around a bit, and we finish up the program with the 10 year as we're sitting at just above 4% right now, just above 4.02% on that 10-year. Don't forget about Teddy coming up on Monday, folks. Stay tuned. We got our man Basil Chapman. He's coming up with the Tiger Technicians Hour. We got our man Steve Rhodes live at 11 o'clock. Fast Market at 12. Larry Pesimento live at 1 o'clock. My dad, Tom O'Brien, live from 3 till 4. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Have a great one Wednesday. See you tomorrow. Stay tuned for Basil. Building